Alright folks, so today's video is going to be the installation of an RTL SDR dongle. It is a software defined radio uh, to our Windows 10 computer. And then once we do that, we are going to use a program called SDR Sharp by AirSpy. Um, and that will be the interface to the SDR radio. And uh, we're going to be able to listen to a variety of different signals. These are fun little devices to play around with. Um, <clears throat> they're inexpensive, so I would encourage anybody who is interested in radio to go ahead and get one. Uh, play around with them and you'll you'll learn a thing or two. That said, if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. You know you want to. Uh, subscribe or share it somewhere. It uh, really helps me out and it helps other people like you find the content. Alright, that said, I want to say thanks for watching. Uh, sit back and enjoy the show. So in order to do this project, you're going to need a couple things, and obviously the first one is an RTL SDR dongle. In this case, I'm using the one from RTL SDR blog, the V3. I'll include a link below, and you can come on here and read all the specifications and wonderful things about this product. There are a lot of fakes and counterfeits on the market, so if you do buy one of these, buy it from this site, and then you can click on the Amazon link below, or I'll include an Amazon link below that you can use. But you want to make sure that you get a legitimate one and not a counterfeit. I did end up buying the kit that came with the small dipole antennas, and they're not the best antennas, but I've been pretty happy with them. You're also going to need some software to run your software-defined radio, and in this case we are using SDR Sharp, which is a product that's free for download from AirSpy, and again there'll be a link for this below. So when you come over here you want to go to the downloads selection at the top of the website, and we're going to go down and pick the Windows SDR software package. You can see that there are a number of other things that you can download, and maybe we'll cover them in future videos, but for this one, you want to go ahead and you want to download this zip file. When it's done, we'll begin the process of installing the software on our computer. So when the file is fully downloaded, you want to go to your downloads folder, and then you want to extract the contents of that to your downloads folder. So I just make sure that my path is correct and I extract it. And then what I'm going to get is a uh, directory structure or a folder that has all the components that are required to run the software. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder and then I'm going to copy this to my desktop. You can copy it anywhere you want, but I chose to use my desktop. So inside the copied folder, there is a file that we need to run. It's called install-rtlsdr.bat. This is going to install the components that are required to use the RTL STR dongle of your choice. It's going to take a few seconds to run, but it will let you know when it's complete. And there we go. Now we get ready to plug the device into our computer. And I open up Device Manager because I like to be able to see the status of things as my computer detects them. The other thing is that you have to connect an antenna to your dongle. I know that's a silly thing to say, but uh, I just wanted to put it out there. In my case, I'm using the Ned Fong J-Pole antenna. Now once I plug the dongle in, I should see a notification in my system tray. You can see here the arrows pointing at that. That's letting me know that Windows is setting up my device. Now what it's going to do is it's going to install a driver that I need to replace. <clears throat> so here I can see the device is installed in my device manager. I have an arrow pointing at that to make it easy. Alright, the next thing we need to do is we need to run a program called Zadig, and that is in my install folder that I copied to my desktop. You want to select the option for list all devices so you can see your device drivers. Now by default, Windows installs a driver that cannot be used by SDR Sharp. So I want to go in and I want to select the driver that was assigned or attached to my USB dongle in Device Manager. So I go ahead and I select that. And then I want to make sure that on the right hand side that it's the Win USB driver. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click Update Driver. It's pretty important that you get this correct because you don't want to accidentally overwrite the wrong driver. Now this process takes a few minutes, but once it's done, we should be able to use our radio, our SDR radio, I should say, with SDR Sharp. I'll also include a link to the installation guide down below, so you'll have that for your reference. Once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close that as Zadig. I'm going to go back into my folder that I copied to my desktop, and then by double clicking on SDR Sharp, I can go ahead and I can run the application that I'm going to use with the dongle. In the Devices drop down, you're going to need to pick the device that you are using. 
and then click the play button. Once this happens, you will see, you'll see a waterfall and you'll hear a bunch of static if everything installed correctly. Here you can play with the zoom and then you can also adjust the intensity of your waterfall. Sometimes it's a little bit better to go ahead and zoom in on a signal and then that way your computer is processing less noise. Um, also, I like to adjust my waterfall so I can see the signals a little bit better. There is a cog-shaped wheel at the top where you'll be able to go in and you'll be able to set your RF gain. Or you can set it to automatic, but playing around with this RF gain will allow you to hear certain signals better. And it's a constant game of moving the gain back and forth to find out what's going to work best for you at what times. We're going to go ahead and we're going to listen to a couple of different signals and see how I adjusted some of these settings. Another setting that's pretty important down here is your AGC. I just wanted to point it out for awareness and let you know that it's a setting that you may want to toggle on and off or adjust. But uh, do be careful around those old aircraft. Keep in mind, sometimes static electricity can set off fumes that are there momentarily, haven't been detected, and things can go boom. So that was an example of some local ham radio traffic that I was able to detect on the SDR. And that's mostly what I use it for. I also use it to listen to public public frequencies like police or fire and things along those lines. It's a lot of fun. Anyhow, I did want to mention again, I am using an Edfong roll-up dipole, J-pole, I'm sorry, a J-pole antenna uh, in order to receive signals. But there's all kinds of antenna types, including the dipole that comes with the kit that I showed earlier that you can use with your SDR radio. Let's go ahead and listen to some other signals. That is an example of a digitally encoded signal. We might do videos on decoding digitally encoded signals at a later date. Chance of rain 20%. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a 20% chance of showers. Lows in the lower 50s. East winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Tuesday, partly sunny in the morning. And that's just an example of listening to the NOAA frequencies that display or broadcast weather information 24 hours a day. Um, I like listening to that too. It's uh, pretty useful and pretty helpful information. And that go ahead and takes us to the end of the video. So anyhow, I want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond or answer any questions.